Order is maintained by God being who he never ceases to be, meaning without sin, it must be removed from us by Jesus or else we have no part with God. If Jesus' forsakenness, which could be no deeper than the flesh, was due to carrying away sin, then that would be only a side effect, not directly funding forgiveness. It's not that God must feel enough bad before forgiving. Let's say I have to take the garbage out. It's 20 below. It won't feel nice, but you wanted to ask a PSA person to do it for you because he'd end up burning himself with the trash. If we try to make some comparison, we could say that hell's pain is active. While the cross at least is passive, indirect, the hurt is not what cleanses sin, but with his hurt, our sins are carried away. The sacrifice was expensive, but worthwhile. God doesn't require pain to get even, but he requires a sacrifice to split sin from us. And when Jesus carries our sin, he's still not a sinner for punishment, but instead his body represents sin itself, which you don't punish. Whatever was not laid in the grave was not touched by sin. God forgives us without sin. You may still do bad things, but they aren't counted, forgotten, taken away, just as Christ's death shows. Let's just agree that Jesus felt wrath for three hours. P.S. think this was our punishment converted into something he could feel. The problem with this punishment conversion is when they say forgiveness is through punishment proper, not just hurt, rather than ablation of sin. We need the blood to wash sins away, not receive sufficient punishment. There's no penal substitution. He gave himself for us and our sins to redeem us from all iniquity. With a price, the Lord bought us to God from earth and from among men, he gave his life a ransom. Where do you put sin where it's gotten rid of? I was looking for the closest verses in the New Testament about sins being paid. So I found, number one, death is from sinning, not God. Romans 6.23. Number two, sin rules people. Number three, some sins are greater. Kind of sounds like payment, maybe, kind of, if you stretch it. You, uh, number four, you have sin regardless. The law only shows sin. God might not count it. Okay, so you see, no real actual payment of sin. Ransom, redemption, that's different. On the contrary, an atonement sacrifice was supposed to be different than a recompense made to the Lord. Numbers 5.8. We, however, do see a purchase in the Bible on multiple occasions. We see Jesus paying his blood to get us out of the world. Although the death obviously releases us from the Old Testament so that we can join the new relationship, death is the instrument for release while the price is called blood, thereby referring to sacrifice. I guess it's written this way to prevent us from mistaking that payment as a recompense or retribution. Almost as if the Bible wants us not to think that it was a penalty substitute. <laughs> it almost goes out of the way to say that it's not that way. Of course, penal substitution wrongly thinks that the sacrifice is when God makes a recompense instead of us. The Bible already tells us that he died to be our Lord and to forget our sins. The Bible says, why he died and how to be forgiven. It says many times about taking away sins, purging sins, sometimes covering or blotting out. We see the body as an instrument to put away sins, but not for recompense. Whatever Jesus felt on the cross was not a payment. Let me emphasize here that it was not a payment of sins. The payment was his blood to get us. That always is separate in the Bible. Why does the Bible do that? <laughs> However, there is two times when they connect. Christ redemption is related to forgiveness of sin. So, I think only his body dies with sin, Romans 6.10, and over sin, as if to carry them away. So now he is without sin. If we go outside of scripture and think philosophically, pay means a problem, right? God has to pay because he doesn't have it yet. That might be okay if it wasn't inside of himself like P.S. is. He has a desire that needs fulfilled, you know. He's God. <laughs> It might be okay to pay if it was outside of himself, you know, if it was in, an instrument, a tool that God was using. But within God, there should be none of that frustration. But even P.S. admits that outside of God is only grace. The payment is only within God, which is, I call, frustration or impossible. Oh, then, if we look again at the Bible, we see Christ pays his blood to get us out of the world. This is a payment outside of God. Sins aren't paid off. What is between you and God must be taken away Instead, P.S. think we're forgiven by retribution, and retribution was his suffering, but, or if not more. Uh, but pain is not part of appeasing God, but a part of carrying sins. If the sins are carried away, then God's happy. You see, dying as our penalty leaves nothing to sub for. 
Abraham wasn't told to punish his son. A change in relationship happens. The Bible uses the word reconciliation. God won't coexist with sin despite any payment or fee. You don't need a sub since Jesus died with our penalty. So it's gone. And not even he could pay it. There's no bribe. Sins are washed or carried away by the putting off of the body or blood of Christ. Even so, a sacrifice both puts sin on the body and also puts the body away. Communion is like us partaking in this cleansing or ablation. The old relationship with God is put away by Christ's body and we get a new spiritual relationship with God in which he's our Lord. God's mental release of us from the Old Testament is our forgiveness of sins. Those sins still have consequences, but not from God's old way to relate. We're in his family now. Baptism is a way to confess this. We repent from sin to God, just as Christ bought us from the world to God. Losing our independence, we get his family spirit. He holds nothing against family, charges enemies for everything. But P.S. wrongly thinks that retribution is part of forgiveness, and Christ's death is part of, if not after retribution. They think that if sins are on Christ's body, then he's separated from God. However, this separation was only for the part which could die. The point of the sacrifice is to die away sin, and that part resurrected anyway. Nevertheless, despite feeling physically terrible, dying over and with, but not under or in sin, he bore them away from us, so God's happy about us. If you want to call what Jesus felt a general retribution or improper punishment, meaning hurt, you cannot say that it merited anything, bribed, nor was much closer than the consequence which God chose to experience. Let's say we steal five pieces of gold from God and we can't repay so Jesus takes another five pieces of gold which God already has and pays it okay so the balance is restored for us but I think it's never restored although God gives more with Jesus the PS might say sin was an unfair advantage for us which God didn't want for us to have so God disadvantages us the same amount through Jesus so things end up evened out in the end but I think sins can't be made up. And running away from God didn't advantage us, rather disadvantage. They might say we should feel the weight of what we did, so Jesus felt that for us, the retribution. I think feeling this didn't atone. Regardless what Jesus felt and learned through suffering, the sin had to be removed. Pen subs might say Jesus' death deters us from doing more sin. Sure, but that didn't atone either. The Lamb takes away the sin of the world, yet I still sin, thus the Bible's wrong. Different people have told me that this week. An agnostic Bart Ehrman also uses this. <laughs> when people try to defend PSA, they use random verses or arguments. Another one is, without PSA, people would sin a bunch, but I think we get a new heart. Another one is the problem of evil, but God's worth it. These, of course, are not what we're talking about. They're other arguments. In fact, the PS can only agree with me about everything. It's just that they add a fantasy, something that I can't agree with. It needs to go. And it doesn't help them to quote verses since it's not in the Bible, but they do quote a lot of verses. It's like they're really trying to prove my point. I only hold what's in the Bible, so discrediting me is to discredit their own foundation. P.S. is their own choice to hold. It's not a good option. They call me a liberal. And as one of their top scholars would say, an idiot. But I think this is something we shouldn't be adding to God's book. I tend to say, the devil got us going to hell, but God saves. The church people don't like it when I say that, I notice. They, they say that it accredits the devil. Are tricksters credible? And aren't we helpless without God? Using repetitions all the time is going to get you into trouble. The devil uses this to sneak P.S. into the atonement.